stockpile this now. Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. What am I talking about? We talk about a lot as a prepper community. If you're here, you're of like-minded, preparedness-minded. We talk about food, we talk about all kinds of things. Food storage, I use food storage as like kind of a generic term for food, water, preps, any preps. I just call it food storage. What do I think we need to emphasize now? I've been talking a lot about food. Yes, I feel that that is very, very important. Stockpile lots and lots of food. But what does it take to prepare a lot of that food? What do you have to have more than food? Yes, you guessed it, water. Stockpile lots of water. You can store it in anything. Let me pause the video for a sec. I'll go get some things and I'll show you. Okay, I got the stuff. So, so what are some of the first priority things? 55 gallon food grade drums. Yes, great. I'm not gonna wheel one over here full of water. That weighs a lot. Those 250 gallon whatever IBC totes. The big, you know, 1,000, 3,000, 5,000, 8,000 gallon water tanks. Yeah, that would be awesome to have. But what are some other things thinking outside the box? It may not be so far outside the box. You may have thought of some of these. Of course, you can, I'll put water in anything because there's a difference. There's two kinds of water, basically, you're going to have for water storage. You're going to have potable water, which is for drinking. Then you're going to have other kinds of waters. You're going to have flushing water for toilets. I'm on a well, so all I got to do is fill up the reservoir, flush the toilet, bam, good to go. Um, water, watering the garden, water, bathing water, laundry, washing your clothes, washing the dishes, all those kind of things. Non-potable water, but still water. Okay, so there's different ways to store them. Some things, some containers, you want to, are good for potable water. Some containers are not good for potable water. For one thing, I'll show you potable water. Okay, Arrowhead, yeah, it's drinking water, okay? And this is not actually Arrowhead. This is seal broken, um, already drank, sanitized, refilled with our awesome good well water, which is actually probably better quality water than the Arrowhead water in here that was in here initially. <laughs> but we do buy the bottle of water sometimes because it's good to have out in the vehicles when we're out and about. Um, and it's just something you can have it to your preps. You can add it to your preps. And then if you drink it, just keep the bottle, sanitize it really well, refill it, get that positive bubble at the top, put the cap back on, put it in water storage. So used water bottles, that's an obvious one. What about this? Sparkling water, Perrier bottle. Same thing. This is not Perrier. See right there. You can see the seal is broken. It was drank and then we sanitized it, refilled it with water, potable water, because this is drinking water type container. Those, uh, I like those, what, seven gallon um, igloo water um, containers. They're blue. They keep them in the camping section at like Walmart and different stores like that. Those are really good also. Have some of those. Um, you, you know, one other one, one of my favorite ones is every time I buy cat litter, um, I buy it in the plastic jugs because I rinse it out and then I fill it full of water. That's not potable water. Of course not. I'm not going to drink that. But it'd be perfect for flushing water. It'd be perfect for watering the garden water. Stuff like that. I wouldn't necessarily probably, I might not use that for, you know, washing the dishes or stuff like that or bathing myself. I don't know. But we know. We can look at the containers and know what we're going to use them for. What's another one? Right there. Bleach. Or not bleach. Vinegar. Sorry. Vinegar. Not potable. I'm not going to use this as drinking water. But rinsed out really well because it's probably going to smell like vinegar, actually. No, it doesn't smell like vinegar. But we use a lot of vinegar in like uh, um, cleaning, it's a natural cleaner, and um, laundry. It helps keep the smells down. And washing pets. Vinegar is really good. Sometimes we put our own bath water. It's really good. Uh, vinegar is awesome. So you can use vinegar containers. Another one that's really good is laundry detergent. Okay, so I got this laundry detergent here. Do I rinse it out really well? No, I don't. I actually, I just fill it full of water because the residual laundry detergent that's in here what can I use it for? Washing my clothes, right? So this is a cloth washing um, container. I know I'm not going to pour this in the garden because I don't want gain in my soil. 
I could also use it for washing the dogs. We can use it for bathing ourselves. Is it perfect? No, but I'll tell you what, it's, it would get you clean. So there's one way to do it. This is Fairlife chocolate milk. Anything that had milk in it, don't use it for potable water. Not recommended. I forget all the reasons why I, I don't do it. Maybe you do. Maybe you sanitize it well enough or something like that, or you know more than I do, which is likely, <laughs> highly likely. I'm just a guy doing the things. Um, but this is non-potable water. Same kind of thing. I can use this for anything, though, because I rinse it out, I sanitize it really well, and then I fill it full of water. Here's another one. Just a regular milk. Regular milk jug. 2% um, milk, you know, 2% non-fat milk, or reduced fat milk. So, yeah, same kind of thing. Sanitize it really well, fill it up. Non-potable for me. So let me show you another potable. Tropicana, orange juice, right? Because it's a juice, it's not a milk. Juices, I will fill up juice bottles and use them for potable. So I sanitize these really well, clean them really well, and then fill them full of potable water. So this is drinking water. Really good thing. What's another outside the box method of storing water? Non-potable. Well, it's pretty simple. We all have these around, right? Buckets. Bucket, all dirty. We use it around the garden all the time. You can set these out. Just sit them outside. Let them fill full of rainwater. If you don't want to spend, if you're on city water and you don't want to pay for it, or for some reason you don't want to use well water, Set it out, let it full full of rain, bam, throw a lid on it, set it off to the side. You have more water, flushing water, garden water, bathing water, stuff like that. So that's one another way to do it. What's another way? Those little kiddie pools or a swimming pool. That's a good way to store water. Uh, people talk about um, water heaters and the water inside them. Well, I have an on-demand hot water heater, so I don't have that. But... I don't know, I wouldn't use that for potable, that's for sure. Just because the way it sits in there and stuff like that. Do you drink it? Yes. But if it sits for a while, especially in an SHTF scenario, if you're out and about and you're finding houses or whatever it may be, um, and you're draining the water out of the hot water heaters, um, I wouldn't use it for potable. What are some other methods? I mean, shoot, I have a wheelbarrow. I can let that fill full of water. Just looking around the yard, I have trash cans, right? We all have trash cans. Let those fill with rainwater if you don't need them for trash cans, or that's an easy way you can buy a trash can and just let it fill full of water. Obviously not potable, but you can use that to water the garden, wash the pets. If you, if you start off with a new trash can that's not all gunked up or, you know, with trash, um, your pets, you could, you know, water your pets with it, your um, animals, stuff like that. And that's another thing. I keep on saying pets, but also your animals, your livestock. Um, they can use a lot of the non-potables. Obviously, I wouldn't, you know, let my livestock drink from this, but a lot of them I could. I'm um, just looking around. I mean, these these totes that I use for gardening, container gardening in, you could fill those full of water. Um, mop buckets, I could fill that full of water. I mean, I'm just looking around. You know, old buckets that we used for paint. We had, um, we refinished our deck. Those buckets, fill those full of water. Um, Laundry buckets, there's so many things. Laundry baskets, not the ventilated type, um, more like trash baskets, um, things like that. There are a lot of different things that you can fill full of water. A lot of, most of them I say, would be non-potable. Even, I'm looking over here and I'm seeing a jug of um, windshield washer cleaner for a vehicle or oil. If you clean them out really well, you can use that for non-potable. May not be the best situation, eh, but you may, be, you may find some sources for that, some uses for that. So stockpile water, lots of water. I know it takes up room. I know it weighs a lot, but you got to have water. You got to have water more than you need food. So please take it seriously. I'm trying to empower you guys with the ability to be more prepared. So you can hopefully thrive in an SHTF scenario. You know, big collapse, calamity, chaos, whatever. Zombie apocalypse. I at least want you guys to survive. I want you guys to be assets, not liabilities. I want you to be proactive in your preparedness. I want more of you prepared because I want fewer people coming from my things and your things. So think about that. Get prepared, do the things, and remember that prepping is living insurance. I love you guys. Have a wonderful day.
and blessings to you and yours.